just another misery wants company story. I have a co-worker who has recently started turning our casual conversation to him complaining about his wife and kids. At first I did not mind. I know how it is needing to vent so I just let him go on. Some of his complaints is how his kids are always loud making him lose sleep and how embarrassing it is to take his kids out in public because they run wild. Awkwardly I listen to him also complain about his wife being lazy and overweight that he doesn't think she is being a good role model for his kids. Now for me, I don't have much to complain about or at least not stuff I care to share. My co-worker started getting frustrated with me for having it easy. This person keeps telling me I need to have some kids. This person even went as far to tell me my boyfriend doesn't love me for not pushing kids on me and how my boyfriend is probably just waiting for a better woman to come along to have kids with. Whatever I'm pretty secure when it comes to my relationship and I already know he's just attacking me because misery loves company. Then it started to get annoying because the sentence, you will never understand my struggle. Kept being brought up. Like shut the f up already. I straight up told him I no longer want to talk to him. He was shocked, but come on I had already gave him advice about communicating with his wife about his concerns but he chooses to stay bitter. Not my fault, not my problem. Also it ended with no issues at work because he just goes to complain about his life to the next person willing to listen. Tell him this, I understand your struggle because I thought about this happening ahead of time which is why I never had kids. I like this response. Basically yeah that's exactly how I thought having kids would be. That's why I didn't. I love this. They push us, while venting and being the best birth control ever. Did you not hear everything you just said? Like we already know you are stupid. But are you this stupid? I would have started getting annoyed by the time he started giving his input on your relationship. What he said in the second paragraph is extremely toxic and uncalled for. Good on you for being able to tell where it was coming from. His misery, but still. One of the craziest things to me is how people who are miserable because of having had kids suggest having kids to other people. Like does your coworker not realize that they basically told you your boyfriend doesn't love you enough because he isn't pushing you into making a decision that'll make you both miserable? You should tell your coworker that his actual life is basically one big condom commercial. They don't want anyone to be happy. Everyone has to be as miserable as they are. It's almost as though they realize they made a huge mistake and can't handle the fact that others were smarter and have an easier time, so they try to trick people into being in the same situation as them. Because if other people choose not to have kids it forces him to accept that he actively chose the life that he hates. It's easier to rationalize if it sucks, but everybody does it. The way to get people like this to stop is to rub salt in the wound every time they bring it up. Usually best to do it subtly by pointing out how awesome your life is, but in OP's case she can just point how that she doesn't want to end up like the coworker. He woke up one day with bratty kids and a lazy fat wife, and has no clue how that happened, or what he did or didn't do to contribute to both situations. He's right. You'll never understand his struggle to act like a victim of circumstance and not the agent of his own misfortune. I think it's because they didn't realize it was a choice, and when they see that it is a choice they get jealous. Dude needs a therapist. Badly? I straight up told him I no longer want to talk to him. Short and simple, I love to see it. Had a co-worker who would tell us her teenage daughters are horrible witches. And they drive her crazy and in the same breath ask me why I don't want kids. When I would tell her she doesn't make a strong case in favor of kids by telling us daily that her kids are witches. She would scoff and say, oh but it's all worth it. Edit, spelling before coffee is bad. An energy vampire I like to call those. I heard this term a few months back, and it really resonated. I wonder if this is my friend's boyfriend who complains to you? My friend is also lazy, overweight, and does not control her kids very well. I think this is a common occurrence with those who shall not be named. He's not the first person that I heard these complaints from. He's just the most annoying out everyone. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Usually when I see posts like this, reminds me of someone telling me why having a cola addiction is awesome, hypothetical of course. Sure I can't hold a job, keep getting arrested, am borderline homeless, my teeth have rotted out. 
but I've got tons of energy. Why don't you want the same for yourself? The only thing worse than a loser wife is being the loser that impregnated her. I'm embarrassed for him, since he doesn't have the decency to feel that emotion. Wow. What a bitter douche. He overshares and you don't make him feel uncomfortable, then he actually has the nerve to go and attack you personally. He obviously has no self-awareness. One can't do much but walk away if the person won't take charge to change. You can't escape, children. It's late for me so apologies if my spelling and wording is hot garbage but just wanted to get this out of my system a bit before I go to bed. I'm a, 22 years old male, who lives with my spouse, and we are happily child free. One issue I find as someone who is not too keen on children is how often times I feel there is no escape from being around them. Went to my friend's and his twin's birthday recently. It was outside and we're all fully vaccinated. We're a bunch of twenty-somethings who it was of course drinking, smoking, music, the whole event, until his twin's friend brought in a baby. Yes a baby. We had to turn the music down, stop being rowdy until it had to leave a couple hours later. I wanted to start swimming, as an exercise with my girlfriend because she loves swimming and exercising with her. It helps motivate me because I'm lazy as f when it comes to it. Sorry. Every single pool is brimming with children. Guess you're just gonna have to come in at 6am or 9pm if you want some peace and quiet. No thanks. I wanted to try going to a nudist camp group thing with my girlfriend because I thought it might be an interesting experience for us. Nope sorry. They are all family friendly. No thanks. Wanna go to Burning Man? Kids. Wanna go shopping? Kids. Wanna go to the park? Kids. Wanna go to a shooting range? Kids. Library. Kids. Circus. Kids. Gym. Kids. Water park. Kids. Dear God can I just please be anywhere with just adults please. Please. I want to be able to swear, talk about inappropriate shiz with my friends, and do things in peace. The only place you can be without kids is a bar. That's mainly it. I'm not saying I think kids should be banned from everywhere, but dear Lord I wish there were more adult-only places and activities. Even for parents to have a break and exist without children around them for five minutes. Anyway long rant, going to bed. When friendships suffer. When my best friend and I first met everything was great we're both goofballs, and we started off as co-workers, it was the only fun at work. She started dating this guy and a few months later while being basically homeless she decided to get pregnant on purpose because she just wanted a baby. When I told her it was a bad idea, she said it was a way to keep him forever. Things started going to shiz between them and I told her he probably wouldn't stick around. She said that was fine because she didn't need him, just the baby. Fast forward three years later, her daughter is two now and she is an absolute nightmare. We went out to eat a few weeks ago. Her daughter started screaming at the top of her lungs and breaking crayons. I told her that I would rather take my food to go because I have anxiety and the situation was making me very uncomfortable. And my friend got upset. We used to travel and just go places for no reason other than freedom and fun. We can't do that anymore. Her daughter is one of the most ill-behaved kids I've ever met. My friend yells at her all day and spanks her with a spoon all the time. Even though I'm not much of a kid person I do know how to talk to children, and when I talk to her daughter in a calm but affirmative tone, my friend says I can't talk to her like that, and that I need to yell. Yesterday I tried to tell her daughter nicely that I had to stop playing with her because it was her bedtime, and she hit me in the face with a spoon. The thing that really pisses me off the most though is the fact that she is living in Section 8 housing in one of the most dangerous parts of town, and had the nerve to tell me yesterday that she and her boyfriend, not her daughter's father, are ready to have their own child. 
On top of that she's in the middle of a child support battle with the father of her daughter because he doesn't want to contribute. What an effing joke y'all. I don't normally do this but I need to today. I just finished talking to someone who I really connected with after a first date, and we've stopped now as we came to the realization that she wants kids and I don't. It says child free on my profile because I try to be upfront but it seems she interpreted it as just me saying I didn't have kids yet. Which is fair enough I should have realized not everyone would be familiar with the term. But it's just sent me on a spiral and I just need to talk about it finally but I don't know anyone who would understand so here I am. I've been in two long term relationships. One eight years. The other two, and both ended after my partner decided she wanted to have children. I have never been anything less than vehement that I don't want children so it left us with nowhere to go. The reason I'm posting is because I've been feeling for a long time that there's not much hope for me as a child-free man to ever meet someone. I'm from a mid-sized city and it seems like there's barely anyone here who is the same as me. I know people are saying that more and more people are choosing to be child-free but from my perspective it really doesn't feel that way. What's more I'm in my mid-thirties now and I've noticed a lot of people who swore blind that would never have kids have since matured and changed their minds. It makes me wonder how many people actually do end up having kids after being included in this demographic. Anyway thank you to anyone who has taken the time to read this. Being child-free feels very lonely sometimes and I thought it might help to post here where there might be like-minded people. I'd be interested to know other people's thoughts and just generally hear from people who are the same as me. Thank you for reading. They wrecked our house. Every year we have the in-laws over for a meal at our house. They all get together once a week for dinner and his mom slaves away to cook for all 15 of them, nine are kids, so the adults get one day off each week from cooking. Fast forward to our turn. We spent the entire day cooking. We made them a traditional Persian meal from my culture. None of them had ever had Persian food or anything like it before. I was so excited to share in something special with them. When the food was ready I did a little intro about Persian food and shared what they'd be eating. The kids talked over me the whole time offering lots of, yucks, while the parents obnoxiously just looked at them and shushed them, which was just as loud and obnoxious. We set them up at the table and they really range in age. Regardless, the parents never get a bite of warm food because they have to cut everything up for the kids and then beg them to eat some of it. These kids trashed the table with food. The floor was covered, and after all that work to plate and cut up their food to the right safe size they left the table after about three minutes and ate none of it. The kids played crazily while the adults got their turn to eat. We talked about future trips and things we wanted to do and they shared how they couldn't afford it could never leave them behind but could also never take them. Then we had a bonfire and basically after just nicely getting it going we had to pour water on it and put it out. The little kids were obsessed and could not contain themselves around the fire. Then it was time for dessert. We have dogs so we have lots of dog toys and bones and things around. I brought out the most immaculate Persian dessert and while I'm explaining it, one of the kids takes a dog bone and I kid you not, shoves it in the dessert and just looks up at me smiling. We just started getting some drinks flowing and were having some adult fun and then by 8pm the tears started flowing. These kids were one by one missing their bedtime. All the adult conversations were beginning to be overshadowed by tears and the whole fam left by 8.30 reminiscing with us as they left about how they used to be fun. Once they left we walked back into the house only to notice about every piece of decor was broken. The windows were all sticky and slimy. The floor was sticky in ten spots. Everything was trashed. Days later we still talk about how much was ruined in the short three hours they were here. Too long didn't read, kids wrecked our dinner and made a mess. Bingo, what?